Cannabis Genetics and Breeding, Understanding How This Is Important to Your Cannabis Business. Co-Founder of Original Breeders League and Proprietor, Trufe Plant Bioscience. From the United States of America, Priscilla Agoncillo. Hello everyone, my name is Priscilla Agoncillo. I am co-founder of Original Breeders League. We have an award-winning cannabis genetics farm located in California. And fortunately, we have been able to work all around the world, uh, all things concerning genetics, cultivation, uh, developing many different companies from uh, exactly that, farms and cultivation companies, all the way to pharmaceutical companies. So I am here. I'm very honored to be a top speaker of the Cannabis Investment Summit Worldwide. And I will be speaking about the importance of cannabis genetics and how it relates to your business. So um, what is cannabis? I know a lot of people uh, may be on here for the first time and just exploring exactly what cannabis may be. So I'm here to cover just a few basics and go into some insights about what can help you to better understand the industry that you're interested in. So all forms of cannabis belong to a single species of plant called the cannabis sativa L. There are thousands of different varietals and phenotypes of cannabis genetics that express different characteristics from cannabinoid profiles, terpenoid profiles, uh, that's what it smells like, as well as display all different types of physical plant characteristics from short and bushy to tall and sparse and even display a wide range of colors from purples, oranges, pinks, and obviously greens. Now, each unique genetic is useful for different purposes from fiber, oil, protein, terpenes, and of course, cannabinoids. Uh, there's a, multi a multitude of medical uses and there are various, uh, there's a various combination of ratios and uh, all of these have a very unique reaction depending on what your genetic makeup is. Uh, they help with everything from sleep, relaxation, inflammation, pain management, um, and up to assisting really serious medical issues, uh, such as the reduction of seizures. Uh, the most commonly known cannabinoids are extracted from the cannabis plant is THC or uh, CBD. Those are the most popular of the cannabinoids that we, we, uh, that we um, uh, are currently what we currently have in the market. Um, just earlier today, I found out that there were about 400 different cannabinoids that are identified. Uh, so down here, it's already even <laughs> a little less than that, uh, where we're now seeing 144 different cannabinoids that was characterized back in a study done in 2016. So how does medicinal cannabis work? Well, cannabis works in the body through the endocannabinoid system. The endocannabinoid system is a molecular master regulatory system. And it, what it does is it really helps to create homeostasis throughout the body. The, endo the endogenous cannabinoid system is the most significant body system in maintaining and establishing human health. The CB1 and CB2 receptors bind to cannabinoid receptors that are found all throughout the body from immune cells to the brain, uh, working again to establish that homeostasis. Homeostasis is very important because what the endocannabinoid system does is it's in charge of, of really um, helping the body to create that balance again. Anytime you have this imbalance in the body, it will result in a lot of unwanted sy symptoms such as pain, um, epilepsy, diabetes, inflammation. There's so many things that happen when your body isn't in homeostasis. So the endocannabinoid system is a master at, regulatory, at regulating what is out of whack. Uh, so because it is uh, such an important system within our bodies, um, and it's found in so many different parts of our bodies, we can really uh, use the endocannabinoid system to focus on many different diseases, uh, as it again is related to many different regulatory processes in the, in the body. Now, the major cannabinoids, I mentioned this earlier. So what is THC? THC and CBD, they basically have the same molecular structure. It was first founded by 
uh, uh, first discovered and isolated in 1964 by Dr. Raphael Meshalem. I'm sure you've heard his name so many times. He's the godfather of cannabis. He's amazing. And a lot of the work that he's done has really led to a lot of the different discoveries and innovations that we have seen in this industry. So THC is a main psychoactive compound in cannabis that binds with the cannabinoid 1 or CB1 receptors in the brain. And it's mostly known for causing the euphoric or high feeling. THC is known to help with pain, glaucoma, insomnia, uh, low appetite. It helps with anxiety, nausea. There are so many amazing things that THC does help you with. Now, CBD, you've heard that. Um, people are always saying that it's non-psychoactive. It is psychoactive. It just doesn't have the same type of effects as THC. So it's very incredibly similar in molecular structure. Uh, again, it was first discovered and isolated by Dr. Raphael Meshalem. And CBD, again, doesn't produce that same euphoric or high feeling. Uh, CBD or hemp, what uh, the US defines the legal limitation is, is it can't contain more than 0.3% um, THC to be federally legal in the United States. And CBD use is used for many amazing things to help with seizures, pain, inflammation. Uh, it helps with psychosis, many different mental, mental disorders, and uh, any type of bowel diseases and migraines. So it's very, very beneficial, especially for inflammation. So a little bit about this, I won't go through too much about this, but cannabis taxonomy is very important because you hear all of these different terms around, uh, thrown around in the industry. So I, uh, I invite everyone to really look into it um, and find out, okay, so what is indica? What is sativa? Um, what, how is it really classified? How are they really naming all of these different types of cannabis that you're coming across? And what they're saying uh, is a result of, okay, this is an indica. Indica's you know, um, make you sleepy, hungry, this, that, the other. There's so much more to it and a lot of misinformation. So what I do, what I would like to invite you to do is to really explore that and understand the taxonomy of it. Because as you go out and you're taking this um, either as medicine, as a patient, or if you're trying to get into the business of it, it's really important to understand what terms and taxonomy to use when you're, uh, when you're uh, going throughout your journey with the cannabis plant. Landrace strains. Landrace marijuana strains are original cannabis strains. They're the ancestors of massive varietals, um, hybrids that we really enjoy smoking. Some, of, some types of uh, Landrace genetics are um, Afghani, Durban Poison, some of the really popular one, Lamb's Breath or Lamb's Bread, that comes um, from Jamaica, Chocolate Thai, Acapulco Gold, those are all really amazing Lanray strains, meaning they have grown naturally, they haven't been adulterated in any way, and where they come from represents a lot of, you know, what the uh, environment can produce um, on its own. The next type is hybrid strains, where you take uh, uh, different types of varietals, you cross them together. Hybrid, hybrid strains, um, hybrid cannabis is the product of crossbreeding between two different cannabis strains um, and two different sexes. So the types of hybrid strains, some of the most popular is uh, vitamin, vitamin CBD, Canatonic, White Widow, and AK-47. So why are cannabis genetics so important? So cannabis genetics can affect every single part of the market in many different ways. When you have the right cannabis genetics, it will really improve the efficiencies of your cultivation operation. You could have higher yields, stronger plants to withstand any type of environmental attacks, meaning um, if you have the right uh, uh, cannabis genetic, it will uh, thwart off certain types of bugs and pests, things that will lower your production yield. Uh, again, you could have higher yields, stronger plants um, uh, will also uh, thwart off different types of molds and um, mi microbials. Another example of how proper cannabis genetics can impact your business 
is um, how it does and how it performs in your growing, your growing climate. Without proper acclimatized genetics, even the, stronger, the strongest genetics will not survive in an environment where those genetics aren't made for that. So, um, you know, if you have more of an equator uh, indica type of genetic, it may not do well in the colder climate where it gets colder in, in, in more of the mountainous regions. Um, you know, there could be a frost, it could die. There's so many things that the environment has a major impact on whether or not your cannabis genetic will actually succeed. Uh, for extraction purposes, for example, the right cannabis genetics will produce higher yields and be actually cleaner um, because it'll have less microbials, molds and diseases if everything was dried and processed properly. So current problems in the market. Um, there unfortunately has been so many different studies and cases of different farms and uh, it's a really sad situation where millions of dollars uh, of seeds and plants have been sold and they end up being not what it is. So many farmers in both hemp and cannabis have purchased, again, millions, millions of dollars of seeds and plants that end up not being the genetics they were told it would be. What this does, especially in the hemp industry where regulations are very strict with the limit of how much THC percentage can be identified in the plant, could completely throw your, your entire crop out of compliance. And depending on what the laws are, where your hemp crop is grown, um, you could, uh, you know, you could be required to destroy your entire crop. On the flip side, if you're growing for, you know, cannabis and you're growing something for high THC or, um, you know, a high yield, uh, if you have and were sold um, genetics that weren't uh, more uh, of CBD, then you would have a lower yield and therefore that entire season that you've been cultivating you know, you wasted a lot of money. So it's really important that we establish in the current market how to have a system of completely trustable and verified genetics. Another thing is inefficient cultivation. Many farmers have planted genetics that, again, I mentioned earlier, are not able to withstand the environment. As an example, if one day the temperature spikes or reaches a very low temperature, uh, many farms have lost their entire crops because the plants aren't genetically strong enough to withstand that particular environment. Uh, the last thing I would say is that it's, um, it's producing uh, a big lack of diversity in genetic material in the market. Diversity in genetics is so important to having innovation. We, what we're seeing now is the same exact genetics being grown and bred uh, together, being mixed together. Um, and, and what this doesn't allow for is other types of cultivars that express other types of cannabinoids, other types of minor cannabinoids, terpenes, things like that. They're not able to have a place in the market because everyone's growing what everybody else is growing. And that's not really great for a, a, a sustainable industry. So those are some current problems in the market because of the lack of focus in cannabis genetics. The advancement of cannabis genetics. So uh, I'm gonna go now and talk about the breeding preservation and micropropagation of genetics. We're at a very exciting time where um, we have now so much science, so much access to different services and things like that, that will help to improve how we deal with breeding and how we advance cannabis genetics. So there are different methods of preservation and micropropagation. I apologize for that typo there. Uh, there is tissue culture. Now what tissue culture is, is in vitro cultivation of a plant cell or tissue under aseptic and controlled environmental conditions. It's in usually uh, little shoots that are cut and put into agar or a medium. It's like a liquid or a semi-solid that's well-defined nutrient medium 
for the production of primary and secondary metabolites to regenerate the plant. So this is typically done within a lab, very secure. Uh, you know, I recently visited an incredible lab that uh, uh, they had medical grade flooring, um, just so many measures that were taken to make sure that it's an incredible sterile environment. And through tissue culture, you're able to clean a lot of the different bacteria and diseases that the plant uh, originally took on. So that's very important for the advancement of breeding and genetics. Seed banking, there is more and more uh, ways to preserve um, you know, different genetics. Cryogenic storage is favored for the preservation of DNA tissue and germplasm because extremely low temperatures are believed to stop most biological activity or degradation of it. So that's also coming online for the advancement of breeding and the advancement of genetics um, and cannabis in the world. Genotyping is very, very valuable. It's a test that has really, really great applications for growers, breeders, distributors, regulators, um, including confirming cultivar identity across the supply chain. So one of the identified issues uh, from the beginning that I mentioned was not having verifiable uh, genetics that you're growing. So genotyping really does allow for you to have that correct information of exactly what you're planting on your farm. Um, and across the supply chain, it helps with informing decision-making um, for plant breeding and selection and then monitoring for very specific data as you're going into breeding. The next step to that would be whole genome sequencing. Now, whole genome sequencing is really the process of determining the complete DNA sequence of an organism's genome at a single time. What this does is it entails sequencing of all organisms' chromosomal DNA as well as DNA contained in the mitochondria. And for plants, it's in the chloroplast. There are so many incredible things that are happening with the ability to do whole genome sequencing of the cannabis plant. We are able to now take that data, match it with human DNA, um, do comparisons and, and see what is actually working for different types of DNA, so the DNA of the plant is being matched against the DNA of, uh, um, you know, the patient. And we're really now going to be able to, because the science is there, going to be able to explore exactly what types of strains, what types of uh, breeding we should do in order to achieve a type of result that a patient is looking for. Um, and, and that's going to be very, very uh, important as more and more products roll out, especially in the medical sector for medical cannabis. Um, and I'm very excited to see all of the innovation that happens from there. Now, breeding and cannabis genetics, the breeding of cannabis genetics. Um, understanding breeding. So when people talk about breeding, you have a basic concept of what that is. But what this is in the cannabis industry is when uh, especially with the plants, is when these chromosomes are combined, a unique arrangement of expressed and non-expressed or dominant or recessive genes are formed. And so this is why even in a crop that has been pollinated by a single male plant with known genetics, you can get offspring that possess so many different phenotypes and cannabinoid profiles. It's again because of the recessive and dominant genes. So the process of selection is very, very important when you're getting into breeding um, because you have to have that understanding of the plant and understand uh, that it takes time. It takes um, selection through thousands and thousands of plants to properly select it. Uh, and the different types of breeding would be traditional breeding and selection. That would be 
um, the same type of plant that is crossed with its own genetics. And through that, uh, through many generations of that, you continue to select the strongest plant that expresses a specific characteristic that you're looking for, whether that be in terpene profiles, taste, or flavonoids, um, or uh, ratios of uh, the cannabinoid profiles, you really do that whole, uh, take that whole time to select and that is a form of breeding. There is the crossbreeding and selection, which um, I mentioned earlier, that's when you take two different um, plants and you cross them, you po cross pollinate and you then select from the offspring of that and you continue to stabilize uh, that through the different rounds. And then there's genetic modification with things such as CRISPR that's happening, uh, where you are uh, using an, uh, science to either turn on or turn off certain genes. And in some cases, some researchers are actually trying to genetically modify the plant. Um, at this stage, most of that work is uh, for the purpose of turning off the THC uh, producing gene um, for uh, the hemp industry. A lot of companies are looking to have higher yields of different cannabinoid profiles, but uh, not have the THC uh, molecule be present because of different regulations depending on where you're from and what type of license that you have. Okay, thank you so much. That's all the time we have. We really appreciate your wonderful presentation and all your valuable information. Thank you so much.